Hey, welcome back to Begin As You Mean To Go On. I uh, want to welcome back our old friends and welcome our new friends. Uh, I can't wait to share this episode with you. And before we get into that, um, if you're new to the podcast, if this is your first time listening, then I want you to go ahead and listen to this episode, uh, listen to the whole thing right? And then if you find value in it, if you get some gold nuggets, then I'm going to invite you to join the family and leave your five-star rating and review and subscribe so you get all the goodies going forward. Okay. So uh, very excited about this topic today and it's so, so needed. Today we're going to talk about things that you should stop doing, right? Things that you need to automate in your service business and when you should automate them. This is so, so important because by the nature of service businesses, it's costing you your time. You are taking your time to deliver the service, especially in the beginning. Now, you know, it might be your time, you might be hiring people, but you're taking person time to deliver a service for the most part. And so anything you can do to be more efficient and to save your people power for the things that only people can do, the better it's going to be for you and your business. It's going to help you be more profitable. It's going to help you avoid burnout. Like there's all sorts of benefits and really almost no downside. So I'm going to share with you minimum five things that you should be automating um, and give you some tools to the tools that, that I like and I use to do to automate these things. Um, and uh, you're going to come away with definitely something that you can go implement right away. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing, and uh, it pains me that I have to say this, but I, I know from talking to people that I do need to say this. The first thing is scheduling, right? If you are in 2021 still doing the when are you free, when are you free, back and forth, email, text, you know, exchange to, to schedule meetings with your clients, with your prospects, with anybody, I would like to invite you into the 21st century. (laughs) All right. You need to get a scheduling tool. Um, there's a ton of them out there. I really like Calendly and as a bonus, it's black owned. And so here's how that changes things. Instead of doing that little dance back and forth and taking, you know, however long to do that, Uh, you're going to make it easy, right? You are going to buy this software and you're going to connect this software with your calendar. So if you use Outlook, if you use Google, whatever it is, um, you know, and depending on the level that you buy, you can connect even more than one calendar, right? So I have a personal calendar and I have a work calendar and my dog has a calendar and like all the things, right? So you can connect multiple calendars to this tool And then you can designate the times that you are free to meet with clients or prospects or whatever kind of meeting. You can have lots of different kinds of meetings on there. Um, You can have coffee dates, you can have sales calls, like whatever it is, you can say, I want to take all my sales calls on Wednesdays and you can block out, you know, four or five hours on Wednesdays when you do that. And that's when people can schedule, right? You can also have a free for all um, where people can just find any time that's open. Um, and because you've connected your calendars, it's going to look at what you have already on your calendar and it's going to choose the open spaces so that you're not double booking yourself. Um, the trick to that though, is to make sure that you do actually put things on your calendar that you are obligated to do (laughs) so that the machines all know what's happening, right? There's lots of ways you can configure, um, I don't really talk to to people about this personally anymore. Most of my clients have this on board by the time they get to me. Um, But there have been times in the past when I've talked to people about this and they're like, well, I don't want to just open up my calendar like that. Well, you know what? You don't have to. You could say, you know what? I have three hours on Friday and that's when I meet meet with people. Right. So that's just an excuse, basically. So RIP your excuses. That's one of my favorite hashtags. Um, Just stop doing this. Like it just, it makes you look, uh, anachronistic and, um, you know, like come into the century. That's all I have to say about that. All right. So we're not, uh, we're not going to do manual scheduling anymore. And as a bonus, don't just give this calendar to your clients and your prospects to schedule with, let's say you have regular client meetings and you know, they're going to be like every Wednesdays at 11, you should still use Calendly to schedule those because, you know, you go into the tool and you put your client's name and email address in for them because that's going to put it on their calendar. They're going to get the invite. It's going to send them the automatic reminders. You're going to get all that stuff for free and hat tip to Chris Davis, my marketing mentor 
Thor for um, bringing that to my attention. I, I was like, you know, I had to do a head smack when he said that. I'm like, oh, of course we should be doing that. So no more manual scheduling. All right. It's agreed. All right. The second thing that you need to automate is follow up. And, you know, you might have heard it said that the money is in the follow up. And this is so true. Humans are busy and we're distracted and we're doing all sorts of things. And even the things we're interested in, you know, we get pulled away from them and we get distracted. So I want you to take that email that you've written 500 times as a follow up to client meetings, as a follow up to sales calls, whatever you're regularly doing that requires follow up and you're still manually doing it, I want you to go fish in your inbox, take that email, I want you to put it into your autoresponder and automate it. And it can be fully automated, meaning let's say, you know, someone, let's say someone schedules with you with with Calendly, right? Well, Calendly can talk to your CRM. So in my case, that would be active campaign. So you can actually store the date of whatever the meeting is. And then since you now have the date of the meeting, you can now automate an email that says, hey, one hour after this meeting or four hours after this meeting, I want to send this follow up email. Right. So you can partially automate it. You can fully automate it. You could have uh, an autoresponder based on tagging. So uh, an example might be, you know, I talk to people all the time who are interested in working with us and we get on a call to see if they're a good fit for the program. And so I have two different outcomes, right? Either they're a good fit or they're not a good fit. So I might want to manually apply a tag depending on what the case is. And then because I've applied that tag, an email goes out that's appropriate to being a good fit or being a bad fit um, and maybe referring them on to someone. But all I have to do is go in and apply that tag. I don't have to manually write the email every time. Um, Another way to do that, if the autoresponder thing feels overwhelming, is you can use um, Gmail canned responses. So you can still pre-write the email and it's not fully automated, but it's done and you're not manually writing it every time. So there's so many ways that you can speed this up and you just have to become aware of what those ways are and then go and implement them. All right. So those are two that I think you know, no matter where you are in business, those are two that I think you can implement at any stage. If you started a business yesterday, if you're going to start a business tomorrow, you can go get a Calendly account. You can look at Gmail canned responses. You know, you can start doing this right away and it's going to raise you up in the eyes of your prospects and your clients that you are organized and that every single person gets followed up with appropriately because you're not relying on humans. It doesn't matter if you're on vacation. Um, It's definitely going to Um, raise your status in the eyes of the people who work with you, which is going to allow you to raise your rates. So, um, okay. So those two good for anybody. Number three, number three is stop doing proposals from scratch. So if you have a business, um, I'm especially looking at my, my fellow web folks, my designers, my developers. Um, if you have a business where you are still doing proposals for people, that's all fine and good but I'm betting that about 80% of those proposals are the same for each client or for each, maybe for each service, right? So if you're still manually doing those from scratch, designers especially are notorious because you want to design everything, right? And so you're putting your designs in InDesign or whatever, and it takes forever. It takes forever and you're just delaying your money. So stop it. Uh, use a tool. There are there are many different softwares out there that can help you automate your proposals. Um, Better Proposals is one that I like and have used in the past. And what it allows you to do is set up templates so that the 80% of the things that are going to go in every proposal are just there and you spin them up and then maybe you write the 20% that is specific to that client. And here's another thing that's going to force you to do. If you're a service business and you're doing super custom jobs all over the place for every single client, having a tool like this is going to force you to systemize a little bit because you're going to think, oh, if I need like 40 templates, then probably my service isn't streamlined enough, right? And if you're doing super custom things that require super custom proposals for every single client, you're going to have a hard time making money without burning yourself out right? And especially if you're doing a proposal and you don't even know if it's going to get accepted, right? So you want to streamline your path to the money. 
and um, streamlining your service and then streamlining your proposals for that service is one way that you're going to do that. Now, this is something that I recommend not necessarily for brand new business owners, right? You want to have delivered your service for a while so that you know your offer is proven you know, you know that you have faith in yourself that you've gotten clients in the past, you're going to get clients in the future, right? So you want to have a little time and a little experience under your belt before doing this step. But once you kind of hit that pain point, it is well worth doing um, and it's going to save you a ton of time. All right. Number four is welcoming new subscribers. Um, first of all, I'm going to assume that you have an email list. And if you don't have an email list, that's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> right? But okay. So if you don't have an email list, you need an email list. If you do have an email list, then you need an automated sequence of emails that goes out to every single new person who gets on your list. Uh, some people call it a welcome sequence or a nurture series or a getting to know you sequence. Whatever it is, it means the same thing, no matter what you call it. It just makes sure that when people are interested enough to give you their precious email address, they don't get crickets in return. And if you think that's not a big deal, let me draw a picture for you, right? Imagine that you walked into a store um, and there were people in that store, there were workers in that store who were there to help, you know, help customers and no one spoke to you. Maybe they look at you and then they go back to doing whatever they were doing and nobody speaks. You would think, man, service here is shitty, <laughs> right? And you would probably leave. You certainly wouldn't feel welcomed, right? You, you probably would feel a little less inclined to buy. And that's, that's the digital version of what you're doing. If you have just slapped your, you know, get on our email list and then you're depending on yourself to manually respond to every person who joins, or you're depending on yourself to be consistent with your, you know, weekly email that's really monthly that sometimes doesn't really happen. You know, let's just get rid of that altogether. Okay. And it's not that hard. The welcome sequence, there, there's a ton of information out there about how to write a great welcome sequence. Um, but really, it's just introducing yourself. And let me just simplify it for you this way. Think about when you're getting to know someone and you have a coffee date. Um, I, had, I had a great lunch date with a friend today. And it's like you talk about the things that are important to you. When you're brand new to somebody, you talk about, you know, what are the things that are important to you? What are the things that you spend your time on? And with a business email list, you know, people are interested. So you want to tell them, hey, this is, you know, what our business is about. This is how we can help you. This is what you can expect from us. And just give people value, right? And if you're struggling to do that, come into the service CEOs group and post what you're struggling with and we will help you, okay? Because this is so, so valuable. It is your first impression once you actually get somebody on your list. So this is one of those things, um, you know, everybody needs this. There's no business that um, markets online that doesn't need to have this in place. So even if you're brand new, you can still do this, right? And, and the great thing is once it's in place, it just keeps working for you. It just, it's this magical relationship builder that just keeps working for you for every person that gets onto your list. And you know, it doesn't have to stay the same forever. Your business is going to grow. Your business is going to change. I usually rewrite my email sequence about once a year. So you can always go back and you can edit it and you can change it. All right. So that's number four. Number five is onboarding. And this could probably be its own episode. <laughs> um, onboarding is super, super important because again, it's that first impression once someone has actually given you money, right? What is happening? And I have heard some pretty convoluted and pretty um, manual, like heavy lifting sorts of onboarding stories where it's like, okay, somebody, you know, first I have to do the invoice and then I have to manually follow up with them if they don't pay the invoice. And then I have to send them the contract, which I have to manually create the contract, like all these things. And if anything happens, if you're sick, if you're on vacation, you know, if you're distracted, uh, if you're fighting fires in your business, then all those things can fall through the cracks, with, which now then affects your first impression with this client. And the higher priced your service, 
the more important it is that you get this right, right? That you make a good first impression, that you have processes in, in place that make people feel safe. Like, oh, okay, I've paid for this service and now I'm inside of a process and I know what to do, you know, first, second, and third. I know what's coming next. And again, none of this is rocket science, but it requires you to step away and do some thinking, right? And think through, okay, what, what is the first and second and third steps? What is the information? What are the questions that I get asked all the time that I could answer ahead of time with a well-timed email that would make people feel like, wow, wow, they really, they really know their shit, right? They already know what I'm going to ask before I ask it. Again, makes you look super, super good in front of your clients and makes them want to come back to you, right? Makes them want to keep working with you for longer um, and maybe up level to your other services. So for onboarding, this is where, you know, having systems that talk to each other is going to be really, really helpful. And um, a really important part of onboarding is actually getting paid, right? So if nothing, if, if nothing else, I highly recommend that you get a payment system that is automated, right? So it's not relying on you manually sending an invoice because here's the thing, especially if you're for my my newbies, my people who are like maybe one, two, three years in, right? And still doing a lot of this manual stuff, people get weird about the money. You get weird about the money. You're like, oh, I'm going to send the invoice. Oh, I hope, I hope they really meant yes. You know, I hope that, I hope when they see the price, you know, whatever it is, like we get in our heads about this money, right? And you put all this emotion into it. And let me tell you this, when, you know, when checkers at Target are, are making the sale, are they thinking about and stressing about like whether you're actually going to pay or are they stressing about asking for the money? No, you want something from the store and you know you're going to have to pay for it. So once people have said yes, they actually want your service, they know they're going to have to pay for it. So just make it a non-issue, right? Get something like uh, Thrivecart is one that I, as a tool that I really like a lot. We'll put the link in the show notes for that because it's just like, great, here's the link, go pay right? It's, it's just, a, it's no big deal. It's just, it's, it's the thing that starts off everything else, right? And do not, if you are a service business, please do not be doing work for people before they have paid you. Okay. Oh, this is, that's notorious. Don't do that. Okay. Put a system in place where people can go online and pay you. And that is the thing that kicks off all of your onboarding. And one of the reasons I love Thrivecart is because it has a ton of integrations. So it will talk to ActiveCampaign, it will talk to your CRM of choice. And um, it's really smooth because with Thrivecart, you can, like somebody pays and you can add a tag to them in your CRM. You can start an automation in your CRM. You can do all these things that means you can now communicate with them based on what they just did right? And there's nothing worse than paying a bunch of money to somebody and then getting crickets and silence and wondering like, oh, are you going to run off with my money? <laughs> right? So make people feel like they're in good hands. Make people feel cared for, cared for, automate that stuff so that they just get, they just get what they need right when they need it. Okay. So lots and lots of tools. Again, this could be, this one topic could be a whole podcast episode. Um, maybe I'll do that at some point, but the point is your onboarding is your first impression for your clients. It's super, super important. If you have a service business that is somewhat experienced where you've been delivering this for a while and you are still doing a lot of these things manually, it is past time for you to sit down again do some thinking about what would be the best experience for your clients and then make it happen. And, you know, if you need help making it happen, I've got resources in the vault about what tools I use to automate these things. Um, we actually have a service where we do an audit for people and um, we'll tell you like, okay, your tech stack is you know, up to the job or it's not up to the job, right? So uh, if you're at a certain, you know, at a certain level where you're really starting to want to scale and uh, you want someone to do that audit and evaluate that stuff for you and lay out that plan for you, that's something we do. We don't do it for very many people. Um, we're pretty picky about it, but it is something we, that we do. So you can reach out about that. 
um, if that's something that you're interested in. All right. And so that's the five things I've got a bonus for you. So let's review first. The first thing is scheduling. All right. So get Calendly or some kind of scheduling tool so that you're not manually running around trying to schedule with people. The second thing is follow up. Make sure that at the points where you know you need to follow up and you're saying really similar things to people, then find a way to automate that or use some kind of canned response or template to make that easier and faster for yourself. The third thing is proposals. Don't be writing these custom proposals from scratch. Use software like Better Proposals that will let you create, you know, 80% of your proposals as a template, and then you can fill in just the parts that are custom to that client. The fourth thing is welcoming new subscribers and, you know, just write three to five emails maybe that you're going to, every new person who comes into your world is going to get to know you for sure and know what's important to you and how you can help them. And then the fifth thing is onboarding and really smoothing out that client journey so that when people actually give you money, they get the information that they need to get. They, they get the information about what's going to happen next. Super, super important. All right. And the bonus that I'm going to throw on top of this is at any point in any of these steps, you can use video to make things even more personal. So <clears throat> anytime you would write something, you could say, you know what, I'm going to make a video instead. You can use a tool like Loom, which is free. And instead of writing it all out, send a little video message, right? Instead of having a thank you page, that's like, hey, check your inbox, put a video on the thank you page and tell people, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Here's what you should do next. Um, Anytime you use video, it's that much closer to you being an actual person who's talking to another person, and it's just going to grow that relationship quicker. So lots of tools. Um, there's tools like Bonjuro that are out there, you know, to make it so that you can really easily shoot a quick video on your phone um, to welcome new subscribers or to welcome new clients. Lots of tools of that nature that are out there to make it super quick and easy for you to um to make videos that are personal. And you can also use videos in strategic places that um, that everybody sees it's the same video, but it just makes it that much more personal. All right, y'all, that's what I have for you today. Um, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you're going to implement some of this advice. And if you do, I would love to hear about it. Come on over to the Service CEOs group and let me know what you're working on. Like, If you want to post and get some accountability, right? come on over and tell people what you're going to do and then tell us when you did it and what was the benefit to you and to your clients. I would love, love to hear that. All right. So if you got value out of this episode, now we're at the point where I want to invite you to go ahead and follow, subscribe to the podcast. You can go over, you can become a VIP. You can go over to carveldigital.com slash VIP, and you can get on our podcast specific list to make sure you get all the updates and you get behind the scenes um, stuff that other people don't get, right? You get behind the scenes private podcasts and um, all sorts of good stuff. So Go ahead and subscribe. And um, if you really like the podcast, leave a five-star rating and review. It really just helps people who find the podcast know that, yes, this is worth their time. They should spend some time listening to this and it's going to benefit them and benefit their business. So thank you so much. So appreciate you. And um, before we go, we're also over on YouTube. So if you're a YouTube person, you can find the podcast over on YouTube and you can subscribe and hit that bell no notification and you can get those on your platform of choice. All right, y'all, that's what I have for you today. Until I see you again, don't forget to begin as you mean to go on.